All right, guys, Steve the Car Guy. Basically, 2012 Infiniti G37. I've been concerned that maybe there's a bad wheel bearing, wheel hub, on this car, because as you drive it, it gets a little noisy. I don't know if, you, if the phone is picking this up. It's a little bit of a noise, not much, It's but it's def there's a little bit more noise on this side than there is on the other side. So what you do with your test for a bad wheel hub is you have to do two tests. One is you go on this side and you test it from side to side. I do feel a little bit of movement, and I do this one, and I do feel a little bit of movement. If you feel movement, this way, it could be a tie rod, just that if you only feel this movement. If you do this one here and you only felt it this way, it could be gone ahead and be a ball joint. But since I'm feeling movement this way and this way, in conjunction with the rougher ride and the noise, the mechanical noise as we're driving, to me it's about 100% that this wheel bearing wheel hub is bad. And since this is a rear wheel drive car, it's just a little wheel hub holding the steering knuckle and holding the, the brakes on. We'll make a video for that, guys, and show you guys how to do that later. But that's how you test for a bad wheel bearing, and uh, thanks for watching. All right, folks, previous video, I showed you that this Infiniti G37 had a bad wheel hub. We did the tire rotation from one side to the other, and so I went ahead and got this Mevotech uh, wheel hub for the rear-wheel drive only, not all-wheel drive version of this Infiniti. And we jacked the car up, got it secure on a jack stand, and we're putting the wheel underneath the frame for extra security. First thing I do when I do a wheel hub, you gotta replace, yeah, not replace, but you have to pull off the bracket um, and the caliper. So the caliper has two bolts, so usually around 13, 14, or 15 millimeter, depending on the application. Then you have these two other two bolts right over here. And that gets the brakes out of the way. And once the brakes are out of the way, then you get the rotor out of the way. And then you come back here, and there's two bolts right there on the bottom and then there's going to be two bolts up on the top probably about 15 millimeter and then you pull the wheel hub out all right folks so back at it again i'm having to record these things by hand because i don't have a gopro and i don't have a tripod and i don't have anybody to help me here so i went ahead and took the caliper off and i got the bolts and i showed you guys the bolt there and there and that's where the caliper bolts came from and they were uh, 14 millimeters, which is the socket I had right there. You can see that. So now that we've got the caliper off, now the next thing to do is to get the brake pad bracket. These are some huge bolts back here, people. This is probably, these look like they were about 17s or 18s. The biggest one I brought over here was a 16. So that's the next thing I want to work on. I'm going to go ahead and get these two bolts out of here. And once those two bolts come out of here, then the bracket and the brakes, and then at that point, the rotor will be 100% free, and you'll pull the rotor off. And once you have the rotor off, then we'll go to the back, and I'll show you how to, guys, how to do that. And we'll get the four bolts for the axle, and we'll get the axle off. So this video will be in about four different parts. All right, guys, so upon further inspection, the bolts holding the brake pad bracket on are in fact 22 millimeters. I tried a 21, so it is basically the same size that's used for the lug nuts. So if I do this, then I have to try to get the gun in here to break this free, and as you can tell, due to the suspension with the sway bar link pin here going into this lower A-arm, um, it's not gonna work. So I'm gonna have to try to either use a breaker bar, which may or may not work, because a breaker bar is about 18 to 24 inches long, and we got a small space here. Or, the other thing you guys can try, something called a crow's foot. Now a crow's foot, will basically fit on here and it's 22 millimeter and then I can go ahead and you see it's 3 8 and I can get my 3 8 socket and try to do that. I prefer not to do this because these things can slip off and then you wind up stripping the bolts and I'd rather not strip them so I'd rather put this one on here and have it do this but either way guys you can either use a crow's foot or you can use uh, the 22. Alright guys so I did wind up using the gun it's 22 millimeter socket I did try to use this crow's foot in there but you know the nature of crow's feet as you put this on here first of all i don't have enough leverage i'd have to get an extender bar and secondly they can always slip off and then strip and i really don't want to strip this bolt so as you can see i went ahead and took my gun and i did break it free but now the clearance in the gap i had was gone but since i was videotaping this the clearance went away see that's the one bolt that's the first bolt of this particular uh, caliper bracket and then we're going to go ahead and do this second one. So once we go ahead and do the second one there, guys, then we're going to go ahead and pull the rotor off. And I'll be back to show you how that is. And then we'll get busy on the axle. All right, guys. I don't know what part of the video this is. Four or five. But we saw before I was able to use the wrench and get the bolt on the bottom loose right here. But up top, there's not enough clearance to use that gun. So I used the breaker bar. It's a 22-inch 
with this breaker bar. And as you can tell, I'm kind of winded. Whew, that was a lot of effort. That thing was in there really tight. But I have been able to uh, get it loose. Hopefully, I can get it with my hand. Yeah, probably not. So, I'm just showing you guys this video. It's a breaker bar. It's half inch with a 22 millimeter socket. I'm going to put this phone back down. And I'm going to put the socket back on there and just loosen up a little bit more. And then we'll have this second bolt. And then this whole brake pad caliper setup will come off. And at that point, the rotor literally just slides off. And then we're going to get busy and take off the four bolts holding on the wheel hub. All right, guys. So we're still working on this, getting this wheel hub off of this Infinity. Basically, you see this one bolt that's missing. That bolt is holds a bracket that holds the strut it holds it onto the control arm and I had to get that bolt out of there to get these two bottom bolts hopefully you can see the two bottom bolts right there the one bolt yeah the two bolts so basically we have both of the bottom bolts loose so I had to get this bolt right there out of there and I have to use different tools guys you got to use the 3 8 ratchet with the 17 millimeter with the extender and what helped me was this particular socket right here. This one kind of bends, so I put it up inside there, and then I was able to bend it, and then I also had to use an extender bar as well to get some leverage, and I did break it off, and we didn't strip it. So, so far we've got two of the bolts. We're gonna try to get the other two at the top. All right, guys, this is part uh, six, probably, of this video. And as you can see, that's the upper, upper bolts of the axle. Those are the two lower bolts. The first one on your lower right, we got really easily. The second one on the lower left, I had to use all kinds of contraptions like I showed you in the previous section to get that off. Now the two up top, we just basically take our 17 millimeter with our sword extender and with our three eighths, and then we use the extender bar and I had my assistant pull it up from the top and we got those two loose. So now that we have all four bolts loose, we're gonna go ahead and finish taking these bolts. And then we're just going to basically tap the back of this socket right over here where the blue part is right there where that metal part is and then we're going to bang it out to the outside I might have to go around to the front and take a little bit of a screwdriver and bang it in and pry that out but since there's no axle connected we're not going to have to use a hub bus or anything like that where you, like what you would if you had a front wheel drive car or anything so hopefully it won't be too bad all right guys so basically we're back here again we got the four bolts off i'm thinking i might either bang the hub out from the back or get the hub buster and try to bang it out from the front but you see that little black connector over there i gotta be very careful with this phone because it's got multiple ways to start and stop the camera and buttons all over the place it's totally ridiculous and so yeah you can see where the hub came in on that side over there so basically that looks like probably this particular cable right here is the ABS cable. So when you go ahead and you put the hub in, the hub's gonna, this side's going to have to be on the left side. And it looks like that cable is going to tuck in over here. So I'm going to have to go ahead now. And we're going to have to unhook this particular cable right over here and see what happens with that. So this will be step number seven, right guys, on how to replace this hub. All right, guys, so basically we're pulling off this Infinity, thinking maybe the wheel hub was bad, but I'm turning it. I don't hear any noises, so I'm thinking maybe it's not bad. Something we didn't check before, tie rod. See, when you want to check for outer tie rod, you do this. There should not be any movement. That is a massive amount of play. And the other cars I've had, when I had this amount of play and I replaced the tie rods, it got better. So I think the, bad, the outer tie rod is bad. And if you want to check for inner tie rod, you grab it here, and you kind of pull this, and you try to see if there's any movement. I don't know, I don't see any movement and I don't feel any movement here. But if there is any movement, I think it's probably coming from this outer tie because that thing is definitely loose. Guys, you can see that, right guys? You're supposed to do this and it's not supposed to be any movement at all. So you can imagine you have 3,000 pounds of a car on top of this, how much this is gonna move. Cause this side has been riding rough and the handling's been a little bit off and a little bit sloppy too. So that might be it. So again, you pull it this way, you're trying to move it in and out. That'd be inner tie rod, which goes into the rack. And this one here looks like we got a bad outer tie rod. All right, guys, so basically what I did was we had to use this Hub Buster hub removal tool. See, ATD removal tool. I got it on Amazon. I think it was about 70 or 80 bucks about a year ago or something. Maybe it was more. Maybe it was 100. But basically, once you get the wheel hub off, there's all these bolts and everything. It wouldn't come off because it's a 2012 car, so it's been on there for a while. So I did went ahead and I took this, took a screwdriver and tried putting it in here, kind of a hammer and chisel type setup that didn't work. So what you do is it comes with different size bolts here. So you screwed it on to the studs here, and it's basically on here, nice and tight. And then you take this, it takes advantage of leverage. All I had to do was go, bam, and I hit it two times. 
and literally, literally it falls off. And then obviously the dust shield from the brakes fell off as well. Now that the hub is off, we're totally good. We're gonna go ahead and put the new hub back in here. But this hub buster removal tool is really good, especially on older cars where there's maybe a little bit of rust in here that was going ahead and having it in there. So a little PB blast and then hitting this and you're all set, folks. Thanks. Hey guys, so like I said, we got the hub off of this G37. So I went online to Rock Auto and I got this Mevotech Supreme um, wheel hub, replacement wheel hub. It, it, it does have a five-year uh, warranty on it, which is kind of one of the reasons I got it. Some of the other ones, they sell like one and two-year warranties. And if you go to Advance and all those places, they give you three, five, and lifetime warranties. They're way over 200 bucks. This was literally like about $82, $85, um, including shipping. And I had some success with the Mevotech brand in the past. So the other thing you do, guys, when you're doing the uh, wheel hub is you want to get some sandpaper. You see this little bit of residual stuff? I don't know if that's... It's not really rust necessarily because this housing is aluminum. A little dirt and grime. So what you do is you want to gonna sand all this out of here. Sand this inside part. Get it all nice and cleaned up. And then you put like a thin layer of grease right in here before you go ahead and pop in the uh, new replacement wheel hub. All right, everybody, so now that we've taken the hub off and we did what I showed you guys, I went ahead and I sandpapered this and I put a little bit of thin layer of grease. The reason you're doing that is just, you know, if in the possibility you ever need to remove this in the future, you know, kind of like helps with the seizing. So the other thing you got to do is see on the back here, it's got this groove, so it goes this way. So I know that when I took it off, these are the kind of things you need to notice when you're taking hubs off. I noticed that when I took the other hub off, this piece, right, this part here was facing this way. So I want to put it back in the same way. It may have something to do with that ABS this little ABS cable when I have plugged, I think it kind of goes in like this. So you just want to make sure you put everything back the way it was. So I don't want to put it in with this part facing the front. So this is the way it went in. So we just go here, same thing. We're just going to line up lining it up. And, you know, I'll just give it a little couple of little taps with the hammer here. If I can find the hammer, but I don't know where the hammer is. Oh, there's the hammer. Yeah, we'll just give it a couple of very light taps just to try to kind of line it up with the bolts. And thank you. Alright guys, so now we're going to have to put the wheel hub on. What you do is you're going to turn the wheel whichever way to give you more access, more space in here. When I initially tried taking the wheel hub off, I had it straight and I didn't have any space. I'm like, wait, turn the wheel. So you turn the wheel. Can you come back here? You can see the bolts. There's four bolts. So there's one, two, three, four. So what I'm doing is I'm just hand tightening them. So you're doing this and you kind of, you're going to have to tap this a little bit either way on either side here to kind of get it all lined up so the bolts line up perfectly. You want to make it a nice, perfect straight. It goes in nice and tight. You don't want it to be going in there and fighting with you and you're thinking, oh, do I have it on straight? Do I not have it on straight? Because once it's garbage in, garbage out, you got to get this thing on perfect and exact with no tolerance for failure and, and, and messing anything up. Otherwise, your alignment's going to be off and everything's going to be off. So I got the three on here by with finger tight. Then after we're done filming this video, my sister's going to go ahead and he's going to turn the wheel this way. And we're going to open up the space for this other bolt where you get all four bolts finger tight. And once you get all four bolts finger tight, then you go ahead and you grab your ratchet and tighten them up.